Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Explode, your expert business show. And today I'm here with the most beautiful woman in the entire world, my wife, Lovalda Vincenzi. Now, the reason why we are doing this um, uh, episode, it is because uh, she came across uh, a report with some shocking news uh, about uh, women on stages and female speakers. And the work that she does uh, is in the area. She's not only emceeing uh, large events uh, regularly, but also she teaches women how to be in a higher position in fill up leadership roles and uh, as well being on bigger stages. So, baby, welcome to the show. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now, so w- what's going on? What's going on? Why women are not on more stages? Uh, I mean, is is a men problem? So do we need to attack the men and we're doing no. something wrong? No, not not this time. I'm not. Look, I might be a little <laughs> bit of a feminist, but I'm really not about attacking the men, um, because my view is: look, you can put structures and systems in place externally through government. You can blame it on men, but ultimately, even with all of this stuff in place, if women don't turn up and show up and step into roles, then they're still not going to get those speaking gigs. Sure. Let me give you a classic example. So last year, Anik and I ran, um, Anik from Speaker Express and I ran something called the Female Speakers Conference. First time we ran it, we're doing it again this year on the 11th of October. And as part of it, we had awards for female speakers. We had like five categories, I think it was. And one of them was called the Rising Star Award, which was designed for people who are brand new to speaking, just kind of starting up and you know, moving through your speaking career. And no word of a lie, 75% of people, women, applied for that role, regardless of where they were. The judges had to take them out of that and move them into other categories. There were people who won awards who'd applied for the Rising Star Award. So in that regard, I kind of go, we can't really blame the men or the government or upbringing or any of that kind of nonsense. That's us. So for once, uh, it's not our fault. Not uh, entirely. Not, I didn't not say enti- it was <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you coming, you know... Oh, cookie and arrogant. No, 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 it's no. not we our fault. No, back no, down no. a couple of pegs. Okay, right? okay. <laughs> so, is um, how then uh, c- can this problem be solved? Because uh, on one side, uh, it looks like the opportunities are there. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, is that event organizers? They are not uh, taking... Uh, enough women on their conferences is that women that need to step out more as you're saying is that a combination of both what are your thoughts it's around it's always going to be a combination you give me options i'm going to pick all Ooh. um <laughs> do you want a or b both it's a combination so um but i think the truth is that a lot of organizers are more and more waking up to the fact that they'd love to have a mix on the stage so, um, but they, but the truth is having spoken to a lot of organizers, they also seriously struggle to find women to put on those stages. And knowing so many women, you know, running a group called World Class Female Speakers, like I know a lot of women who could go on those stages. We just don't put ourselves forward. So then what's going on? Like, is it, um, you know, I'm not a believer in this impost- imposter syndrome in its entirety, hmm. but we do have a different kind of mental makeup about what when we're allowed to step forward. So I think it's two things. One, it's how big we think about stages. Yeah. So I found, I, and I can put a link to this here afterwards, I found this report called Closing the Gender Gap at Europe's Top Policy Events. And they basically um, evaluated, I think it was like 23 European um policy events where they're looking at climate change gender a a whole raft of things that impact europe Mm -hmm. and they were they were looking at what is the mix between men and women there and for some conferences it was as much as ridiculous as three men to one woman um so they're looking at ways to kind of address that yeah i'm seeing even when i'm talking uh, speaking at events uh, generally there is the headline and they are all men and then there is the odd woman uh, popping up uh, and uh, it's just, who are you just basically ticking your diversity box here? <laughs> uh, so uh, you can have, uh, you know, a black woman on stage or a woman on stage. Uh, just to look, look at here. We've got diversity in gender, in ethnicity, whatever, tick, tick, tick. Um, but here's the other side of things. It's all well and good. What Like, here's the report. I kind of printed it out. It's like my little Bible now. Um, 
I was enraged. Yeah, literally, literally. She enraged. walks around. She walks around the house with a report, with a bloody report. It's a good reminder because I look at it as two things. One, um, there are so many opportunities out there for women to speak on really big stages, and I don't think this is European centric. Mm. I get a sense that it's very similar around the globe. But secondly, what it also says is how big are we thinking in terms of what kind of stages we can get on as women? Are we sure. are we still thinking in terms of oh, you know, I'm going to do gigs for for, for um, the local library for the local <laughs> library and the local church and there's nothing wrong with that or are our ambitions really like i, I want to change policy so i hear a lot of people who come and start working with me say i really want to change the world well here's an opportunity like if you can get on some of these policy stages then that's an opportunity to change the world the second part of that though is we have to be found and um as much mm. as there's one thing i've truly discovered over the past year really diving into this is it's not a problem of talent <laughs> it's not a problem yeah. of are there women out here who can speak on these topics are there women out there who can speak confidently and competent do they have the skill it's not a matter of skill yeah it's a matter of because there's lots of people on stages now and you watch them and you think i could do better than that <laughs> like really really you pick them you mean to tell you why they pick them because they could find them <laughs> Right. So the reverse of that is as women, how easy are we to find as speakers? So when we were doing the female speakers yeah. conference, we'd have people pitching. Yeah, yeah, I want to speak on the stage. And then they didn't have any video footage or um, they weren't able to pitch effectively. They weren't looking at what it is that the group is about. Um, what's the event about and really putting their best foot forward to show how they would would map into that. And I think men are unfortunately a lot better than that. Oh, I think uh, it's um, uh, we can. Uh, uh, I don't know. I find that's that's the same. Working with a lot of clients, uh, uh, work with a lot of speakers, uh, uh, men and women, and I completely agree with you. Men uh, generally, if you say, okay, go and apply for that gig, they will go and apply for that gig. Go and book that podcast. They will go and book that podcast. Now you go into the female realm. Say, go and apply for that gig. <gasps> But what if, uh, and now this uh, hundreds of thousands of what if uh, open up. Am I up. ready? Are they going to accept I, me? Is I'm the just... topic going to be good enough? Uh, am I good enough as a speaker? Do I have all the, all the pieces of the puzzle together? And you mentioned something actually which is really relevant about uh, women in jobs before yeah. when we were having the, the conversation. Yeah, there's this... Um, really well-known study i can't remember the precise details so don't come like rushing for me like that's not what it said um mm -hmm. but it's something like when it comes to job applications um men only feel like they need to know about i think it's like 60 70 percent of the, what's required in the application no. to apply if, if it's uh, if it's in my case if uh, 20 percent is enough i'm yeah, more than I'm qualified <laughs> whereas women we've got a much higher threshold where mm. we need to feel like okay we need i think it's something like you know 80 90 percent for a woman to apply for a job and 80 percent is low most women you know we kind of like mm, 90 percent. there's a little stretch there but i feel like i could do most of that so then i'll put myself forward um, so some of it is is very much around this talk, chatter and talk that we've got in sure. the back of our head. And we spend so much time and attention focusing on the skill mm -hmm. and learning. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it, who to contact, how to contact them. But the work I do with women, I'm like, girl, please, how many people have you bought from <laughs> that have given you a list of things to do? And your results really don't reflect that list of things. Like you are running around like a banshee doing all the things mm. in the world, but it's just not quite translating because it's not, it's nothing to do with that. It's all the stuff going on in here means the energy that sits behind it. It's like pitching. There's a different energy to somebody who comes and says, look, I want to get on that stage. They've done it before. Um, they have the confidence that sits behind them. And so the way that they talk about it is like they must know what they're doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Versus somebody who's got that internal chatter that's basically, mm, I'm not sure if I'm good enough. I've done it. I've watched, you know, I get... You, I can, get, you can see it. Uh, I get clients say, oh, Lavalda, can you read this pitch? And I'm like, babe, listen, I'm reading this. And this isn't you. This is like a weak version of you. Can we... Can you sing your praises a little bit more? And in order to get to that point, first we've got to get underneath what it is that's really going on back here 
um, t- some of its context, it's like, I feel like everything out mm. there is so big and they all know what they're talking about and I'm just so little. Um, and once you address that, actually, you're then talking from a different space. The challenge is as women, we wait for the evidence to show up first. It's like, okay, so it's slow. Let me do this little gig. Okay, yep, now I've got that one in the bag. Okay, now I can do a little bit bigger. The first one was like 50 people, so now I can do 75 people. Ooh, that was a bit scary did the 75 people you know if you go at that pace you'd be there for bleeding ever i'm not about that so everything i do was like quantum leapy you know this very quantum leapy quantum leapy is all about <laughs> so we put in the comment here hashtag quantum leapy because that's the hashtag of uh, lovelda's life uh, apparently everything she does is quantum leapy but in fact uh, talking about quantum leap uh, i know that uh, you're running a retreat we're going to talk about the retreat soon which is addressing actually this very issue about uh, getting women on more stages and stepping into into their leadership mm-hmm. and uh, who they truly are, into their power. Uh, I want to, before that, though, I want to give a shout out to Vanessa Simmons. Thank you very much for watching, as well as Angela Protein. Thank you very much for watching as well. Um, guys, if you're watching here, pop a message so I can give a shout out as well. If you have any questions, it's a great topic. Put your questions below so then uh, we can answer them and Lovelda can answer them uh, as well. So we, we're we talking about uh, getting uh, women ready to step up. You said you mentioned that there is uh, something underneath that needs to be sorted out uh, or, or changed. How can we start working on that? Okay. How can women so start working on that? The first thing I'm going to say is I don't believe anybody's broken. <laughs> so, um, this so it's, is not, it, it's not a fix. It's, it's not a fix. Don't go to screw fix and... No. It doesn't work like okay. that. So this is not... I don't work in the realm of like eliminating beliefs because they're not going anywhere. Um, when you when you feel like you've addressed one set of beliefs in one uh, one context... What happens is as you step up and step into a different version of yourself, another set of beliefs rears its ugly head or the same set, but in a different context, right? Um, So if you think you're gonna be eliminating belief, hi, Michelle, uh, eliminating beliefs, you're gonna be going around in circles forever because they're not going anywhere. This is about learning to understand the belief for what they are. So where beliefs are really helpful is they help keep you out of trouble, right? Um, if you've got a belief structure that says fire, fire is going to burn you, then you just stay away from fire. Um, however, outside of something getting ready to kind of bite your head off, literally, normally the beliefs aren't in real fact. And so if you think one thing, you're going to keep creating more of that. But we don't spend much time really working out what's going on in our head. And my view is if you believe, whatever you believe you can create and whatever's the dominant thought that you've got in your head, that's really what you're going to be working with. Mm -hmm. The challenge is they're bleeding sneaky because (laughs) they've been working in the background so effectively for so long, you don't even know what's happening. Um, I had a client, oh God, a couple of weeks ago, she almost got me because it's so, the way, it's so incessant in the way that we work through things. So first and foremost... This is, I don't work in the realm of kind of removing beliefs or getting rid of any of that sort of stuff. It's about how to work with it effectively and to understand when that belief is helpful and when it's, um, uh, when it's getting in the way. So if I've got a choice and I can, I can choose to believe that I can be really, really successful Mm -hmm. or I can choose and then therefore it's easier for me to create success or I can choose to believe that the world is really like tough and it's really hard because I'm female and nobody gives me a chance and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Um, then guess what? You're probably going to experience more of that. And we've met people who everything seems to go right for them. It's, and so they're always yeah. bleeding happy. Yeah. Always just in this happy, they, they kind of live in a little benevolent bubble. Benevolent, that's probably the wrong word. But their own little um, bubble where they're yeah. really disconnected from reality. And then you've got other people who are just miserable as sin and life reflects misery. <laughs> it's like No matter one, what they're going through, they they kind of are a magnet uh, of drama. Sh- shit and drama happening drama in, after in drama their life. After drama. So, the, you know, the work that I do with women around stepping into that level of authority, look, you just need to be a different person. And, um, and what I mean by that is the best analogy I've got is it's always going to be terrifying because we almost make up, oh, when I'm ready. You're never ready. You know the first time you left home and then that first bill came through the door and you didn't understand what the hell it meant and that was a bit like, oh, gosh, what's this? 
gets a bill and then the, the energy companies and what do I do about them? And, uh, you know, you just have different quality problems now, right? Yeah. Now you're worried about like well, how a client's going to feel or are you going to be good enough to get on that international stage because you've never done it before. But that is, if what you're running underneath everything is that you're going to need to be ready and it's going to feel calm and it's going to be easy. It, it, it's going to be uncomfortable. It can be easy and uncomfortable. It's like the two things don't, just because it's easy doesn't mean that it's comfortable. Sure. I've done lots of like really easy stuff where oh. somebody's dropped something in my lap. I'm like, yeah. And then I turn up and I go, oh God, what did I put myself into? <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that uh, also this was part of your, knowing you, uh, this was part of also your personal journey, stepping into your own power, in particular talking about speaking and uh, getting out there with your own business. Uh, how was that change and the transition for you? Was something that happened suddenly that you had the revelation is like, no, I got to get out there more. Stop playing small. Now I want to show how the world how great Lavelda is or was part of a process. How was that for you? Let me put it this way. What you just spoke about is what I did for about seven years and got no results. <laughs> like, wake up in the morning, today is going to be the day, this year is going to be the year, people are going to know my name, right? Nothing happened. Yeah. It was lots of like, because I didn't believe it. And then as soon as the, it came to the reality, I'd get flustered and overwhelmed and I didn't know what to do. And, you know, so I spent loads of time. I spent like a good six, seven years of, and I'm not a stupid person, you know, I'm pretty... It made it worse. It was like, I'm a very intelligent person. I should be able to figure this out. Um, but it would come to charging and I just couldn't get my head around that. Mm -hmm. And it would come to something else. And, you know, and I just did not have the right support structure for me to navigate through those uncomfortable um, new, navigate through the uncomfortable new worlds. And what I mean by that is not that the new world is uncomfortable, but different is uncomfortable. It's just... It was like this and now this has happened. And then just weird experiences, like I'd get myself booked on a really amazing stage or I'd suddenly get this really great client and I'd be excited and then I'd be petrified because I think, am I gonna be able to do that again? Mm. Like, is this a fluke? This stuff doesn't happen to me. So um, all of that like go, 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 the desire was there for years. What really changed things is when I had a structure to support me through that uncomfortable phase because I couldn't sit in that discomfort for that long without somebody to bounce off to, to yeah. remind me of what is it that you're thinking and this is on the right you know it's not stuff it wasn't necessarily anything brand new but those reminders is what I needed almost as a foundation if you think of it as like a foundation that helps you kind of lift up because otherwise I'm kind of mm -hmm. jumping mm -hmm. and then pfft. yeah and we all need those reminders. Uh, I mean, uh, we go through life, we have opportunities, and uh, for we for men, uh, for women, there is always this, uh, oh my God, can I really do this? Uh, I think, as you said, also for women, even more than for men, and uh, creating the structure of accountability and uh, reminders uh, of how great you are. Hey, that you don't have to play, don't, don't go back and play small, but actually, Keep getting out there and uh, play and and play a big game. Uh, that's um, that's super important. I think what I'd add to that is um, we think it's just about business, but unless you you're bipolar or something, you're the same person, right? Um, you are, and even if you're bipolar, you're still the same person, right? But um, you're the same person in business as you are in your personal life. Yep. And for women particularly because we have such a nurturing nature, we will start to come up with excuses outside of business that we don't even know are playing out that stop us from playing big. I'll give you an example. This is a true life example. I'm going to share behind the scenes sharing coming behind the, sh behind behind the, the scene. scenes. So one of the things that I was for a longest time too scared to even to admit to myself was what if my business gets bigger than my husband's? then how's that gonna affect this, right? So unconsciously now, I only I can only grow as fast as he can grow because I need to stay a couple of steps behind. And then like, what if we have a family? Then like, how's the, you know, and all of this stuff, this luggage, baggage stuff that we don't talk about because it's business. Um, and so we can't talk about these other things that unconsciously have us like hold back a little bit because we think, well, I don't wanna feel like I'm grabbing, getting this at the expense of something else. 
and being able to navigate through those thoughts because you can have it all like it doesn't have to be one or other it's different sort yep. of conversations that you're having but i wanted to bring that up because um it's not that i'm here like i'm not doing all kinds of life coaching in its entirety but i do acknowledge that what's happening in life has a significant impact on what's happening in business uh, absolutely and i remember when you mentioned it the first time it wasn't uh, true yeah, <laughs> like you you no, you, to, you told me it's like uh, i i was scared that i could have a bigger business than yours and and, and on one side i was like but uh, if you have a great business, uh, I'm just going to be happy. Is that, so what, what, where is this coming from? I was so shocked. And, and on the other side, and my cheeky side came up and said, also, I'm so bloody competitive. I'm not going to let it happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just going to work hard. <laughs> but that's, that, that's just me uh, in, in any situation. But I, I was completely shocked because uh, for, for, for me, I want to see you happy and I want to see you as successful as possible. So even knowing that that could play in your mind, I was like, really? Is that oh, us women have it. Yeah. A, a version of it. Right. And I hadn't told him before. Like the first time I mentioned it, I, I think it came out in a... Oh, after a while. Like it, I and think you I already just... went past it when, <laughs> when you mentioned it. Uh... Oh, it'd been, it'd been there for like years, babe. Um, but in terms of like my business, it was kind of fine. If I'm more successful in a day job, that's fine. Cause they're completely different. But now these are comparable. Like, how's that going to feel? And, oh, you know, and so I, I don't want to create that dynamic. I kind of like being with them. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Now, now that we're getting, we're getting gold cheesy. We're getting gold cheesy here. Back on to the, the point. Back to business. Back, back to business here on Explode Your Expert Business Show, guys. I want to say... Quick shout out as well to Caroline Beasley, just just joined. Guna, thank you for hey. joining. Monica Jordan, <laughs> Sonia Pires, uh, Chapeau Claudet. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, if not, uh, not. <laughs> now, we, we are. Uh, if you just joined, we are talking about women uh, getting women on bigger stages getting women on higher leadership positions and in particular the topic of how women operate in a different way than men operate uh, here with uh, my wife Lovelda and uh, she's running an amazing retreat uh, in uh, when is the retreat going to be oh great question fourth to the eighth of April it's the first weekend in April Thursday to Friday so first four to eight of April and so what's the retreat going to be focused on? And uh, let, let us know a bit more about uh, oh, so excited. What, <laughs> what kind of process are you going to go through to help uh, uh, women step into the uh, higher leadership and step into their own power? So for me, it's really about supporting women and influencers and authority, female influencers and authorities own your innate power to step into the true version of who you are. Therefore, conquering larger stages, high level stages, leadership positions, positions of authority, so on. Um, and, and in doing so, actually, yes, we'll do a bit that's like really speaker related, but most of the work that we're doing is very much starting to look at what are the things that are really going on that you either don't want to say or that are in the background thought patterns that are playing out that are causing the biggest block. And for some of you, it's going to be um, a lot of action that will come out of it. Mm. And for others of you, it might be less action and more, more contemplative time. Um, the group is going to be no more than 12 women tops. It's actually a retreat for those women who've invested in my uh, Quantum Leap Your Influence Mastermind. So I'm opening up five places only for people outside of the mastermind to come and join us mm. on that exclusive weekend. It's a lap of luxury, so um, you is. will be looked the after. The location is uh, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Um, because when you're, when you're really doing the kind of inner transformational work, at least for me, um, you kind of need to be comfortable because we don't know what's going to happen. It could be really exciting. It could be tears. But what I will tell you is you'll come in here and you'll transform and leave as a completely different version of woman, really ready to step out and be seen. And um, we're not talking about the surface level stuff. No, we're going deep and really understanding what's really, what are the thought patterns that have really been playing out? Because once you get to those, what you get to see is, yes, it's in business, but often Sometimes it might not even be anything to do with your business that comes out yep. of it, right? Yeah, it might yeah. be something completely different. So it's all inclusive. 
because I don't want any, so I, I don't, I, Quantum Leapy needs to be stressless. Um, so, um, so the price of the retreat includes your accommodation, three courses, uh, three meals a day, access to the spa. Um, it's in Berkshire, beautiful hotel called the Vineyard Hotel. Um, so if you do get too stressed, there are more than 30,000 wines to pick and from. And the wines are great. <laughs> oh, we went really to see the location good. on the last weekend. You lush. Yeah. So it's a combination of a treat to yourself to really allow yourself to indulge and just have that mental space for yourself, but also um, a, a pause point to really look at what is going on so that you can take your quantum leap, catapult, um, jump into the next level of yourself and really own it such that when you come out of it, it's like you go in one woman, you come out this other woman and people are like, dang, who's that powerhouse? <laughs> So if uh, people want to reach out to you, connect with you and learn more about the retreat, where they can go? Well, what I'm going to do is I have um, a link just to have a conversation. I'm not overcomplicating it. It's like five spaces available. So I'm, I've got no website or anything like that to do with it. So don't message me and ask me like, can I go and read stuff? No, let's have a chat. Um, because it's exclusive, I it, it's an application. It's an application call. So two things can happen. One, I can understand what are the main focuses for you that we'd really be diving into in the retreat. Um, but secondly, I can also then understand if you'd be a right, the right fit for the retreat right now, or whether or not another program might be a better fit for you. But essentially, if you've been, um, if you've been stuck, um, if you've been working really hard, but you feel like you kind of hit a plateau, uh, if you're really ready to kind of go from one point to another, it doesn't matter how large your business is. This isn't about you have to have a business of whatever size. It's more about you're really ready to take a big leap in your business to buckle yourself in and kind of, you know, slow. The pace is not good enough. It's time to really take things at a much faster pace. Then get in touch. Let's have a chat. Uh, the chat costs nothing. <laughs> I like making new friends. I have to remind people this, right? Don't let this be a reason for you not to, oh, I don't know how much it is and what's going on. And the, No, let's have a conversation. This can be the first step that you take in having a different approach to the way that you do business as a woman rather than assuming what's going to happen on that call or it's going to be too big or expensive or whatever it is. Here's my, here's the first like hurdle for you. Just book a call because this is kind of how it goes, right? <laughs> talk, 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 talk. Let me talk myself out of it. And then sometimes you've talked yourself out of it and it's not even as big as you thought it was. Like, so just book the call. The worst that will happen is you will have a really great chat and um, you'll have learned something new. <laughs> right? So we're going to put the link of uh, Lovelda's calendar uh, or where the link where you can book a call here in the show notes. If you're listening to the podcast, if you're watching live, we're going to put it here in uh, the comments. Now, before we leave, uh, we, I always wrap up the um, our podcast with uh, something called lifting the veil. Now, I, I don't know that I like we it. Are, no, you, you, you like, you, we all like lifting the veil. It's, it's one of my favorite. Actually, I love, I love lifting the veil. It's one of my favorite parts of the show. Okay. That's the part of the show where we are asking our guests to share something that uh, can be a software, an app, a book that they're reading at the moment, something that they maybe bought recently that made an impact in their life on their businesses. So what's that for you? Um... Over the what I will say is over the last year, what's made the most impact in my business is having more time to think. Um, and it sounds really contradictory because I'm naturally a doer. <laughs> Give me stuff to do. Give me things to buy and read and educate myself. And um, but here's the thing: like you can collect all of that stuff, but if you're not using it and processing it and thinking about it, then um, then it's harder to actually get the traction. And so. Actually, for me, here's my veil, do less. Um, really do less and have, and, and just just creating daily, I create at least, my my morning routine can take up to two or three hours. Like, um, I like yes. to, yes. you can contest it, does. it every morning. It does. Um, I like to take time every day to just think about and consciously choose my day. Because one thing that used to frustrate me the most about being in a day job is I was always so exhausted, I'd wake up and slam into my day. And then I would just slam into the memory of all these things that like list of crazy things that I have to do. And I wouldn't have any time to really 
contemplate it. And any time I took a couple of steps back, even if it was like 20 minutes, just hid myself away and wrote a list of things that I needed to do and thought about what would really be the most mm -hmm. important things to do, mm -hmm. I was actually yep. a ton more effective. So create space. I so love spaciousness. <laughs> create space, create space in your life. Thank you for sharing. Also, make sure you get on into the Quantum Leap Your Influencer Retreat. There are going to be more details below uh, where you can book the call with Lovelda. Highly recommend if you are a woman that wants to get on more stages and uh, want to step up uh, in a consistent way, not just do one thing, one step forward and three step backwards, then uh, join the retreat because it's going to be absolutely amazing and uh, you're going to have an experience that you will remember for the rest of your life. Um, I, I'm seeing all the behind the scene. Uh, she talks to me about all the ideas <laughs> that she has for the retreat. I'm, it's it's going to blow you away. Oh, baby, thank you very much for being here on the show. It's really, been fun. It's been, it's been fun. I it's met some new people. <laughs> And uh, thank you very much for being on the show, guys. Make sure you connect with Lovelda and uh, subscribe to the podcast, Explode Your Expert Biz Show, if you haven't subscribed yet. If you're watching live, thank you for watching live. It means a lot to us. Uh, we don't take your uh, eyeballs uh, for granted. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, also remember that together we grow exponentially. I'll see you next time. Bye. Ciao, ciao.